These three artists, Alex Raymond, Milt Caniff, Noel Sickles, all were contemporaries. Alex Raymond, 1909 to 1956, died tragically in a car accident. Probably the most famous of all of these guys did Flash Gordon, Secret Agent X-9, Jungle Jim, Rip Kirby, the detective classic in the 40s. And just to do a quick view of his work in Secret Agent X-9 here, so you can get the idea. I'm not going to be going into this book in any length tonight, but I, I did want you just to have a feel of his work here. Milt Caniff, another classic comic book artist, 1907 to 1988. Famous for Terry and the Pirates, Dickie Dare, the gay 30s. In the 40s classic, Steve Canyon, contemporary with Rip Kirby from Alex Raymond. Now, this is important because Milt Caniff and Noel Sickles were like best buds. They shared a studio together. They were both Ohio natives. You're going to be able to see the influence that Noel Sickles had on his friend Milt Caniff here. This Milt Caniff book is cool because it shows how he hired models in the studio. Check that out. And there's Milt on the right. This is the famous dragon lady that we'll see here momentarily. The culture and the climate of... Here's a beautiful Noel Sickles sketch of Milt Caniff crashed out on the couch of their studio that they shared. And right away, I mean, I just showed some of Milt Caniff's work as well as Alex Raymond in that previous book. But it, to my eye, right away, I can just see... Um, a greater degree of expression and mastery in the work of Noel Sickles. And Sickles went on to be a prolific illustrator for the Reader's Digest and other periodicals because comic books just weren't making him the money. Oh, here's Milt Caniff's Dragon Lady. That's probably his most famous character from Terry and the Pirates. Sickles had such an influence on Caniff, even designed... The frontispiece for Terry and the Pirates, just to recap, like this thing right here. From what I understand, T uh, Sickles designed this as well as the Steve Canyon um, title for his friend, Milt Caniff. Sickles did the strip from 1933 to 1936 where he bailed for more money. This is Mickey in the story. She's a tough gal. And... Look at his depiction of women um, right there. Look at the beautiful backgrounds with the birch trees. There's Mickey again. I, I, I just, I love his depiction. Look, look at the round face, the beautiful line of the cheek and the eyes. So simple. He, he kept things so simple, yet his lines are just impeccable. Look at the neckline. Um, really great. He, he would have a, a turn of the head or position of the pupils of the eyes and just create expression just in a way that I don't really find the other guys are able to do. Um, so here's Mickey contemplating in the woods. Again, look at the beautiful backgrounds that Sickles could do with the contrast. And he, he did all kinds of styles, you know, the, the contrast with the chioscuro effect of, of high contrast black and whites. He also used Ben Day dots that were becoming popular. He experimented those. You know, he did the full black background and all that stuff. You know, Wally Wood did this thing about the 22 panels that always work. It was famous. Wally Wood is another artist who I really love. And he did the same thing, showing, you know, different contrasting styles in comics and, and how to get these effects like this for each individual kind of technique and mood. Well, Sickles was doing that back here. And in my estimation, he was kind of like the first one to really like do this stuff masterfully. I like this one of Scorchy and Mickey. Look at the shadowing, the cross hatching on their faces there. I and mean, look how angry she is there. <laughs> look at the expression just with the brow arching downward and the Pupils upward and the mouth drawn down. Such simple lines. By contrast, look at this expression here. 
as the guys are speaking and she's kind of looking out of the corner of her eye with that miffed look on her face. This guy's name's Himmelhaus. He and Scorchy are pals. Look at the anatomy, the, the jawline, the line behind the ear, the ear. Such simple lines that he employs. But there's the white kind of water and then a totally different mood of the water with the black contrast water. Look at that kind of ominous figure there, man. Contrast. Really, really great. Yeah, I read this entire book over the course of a couple days, and I just got hooked into the story. Um, particularly, it's about a gold, it's about um, gold that was discovered on Mickey's land up in Alaska, and then she takes the two guys, oh, check it out, more winter scenes. She takes the guys um, to New York City, uh, Scorchy and Himmelhaus, and then wants to go around the world and um, experience Asia and Morocco and all this. So, of course, they get into hijinks and some very dangerous situations. That's how the book progresses. Really nice kind of getting that dusk feeling there with the shadowing. Again, the, his winter scenes are really cool. His interior scenes are nice, too, with the bookshelves and the shadowing. So they're in New York, as mentioned, and Mickey here is wondering, she, oh, I was just wondering if I remember to haul in my canoe before we left. The ice will crack it up something awful. Um, she's a tomboy, so to speak. And, of course, the guys are both totally infatuated with her. And throughout this comic, you think that Scorchy is going to be the one to hook up with her, so to speak, but it doesn't work out that way. Check out the steamship, 1930s steamship, and then this kind of like galleon cruising nearby, which is cool historically because this was the time of the transition uh, from sail to steamship. This is funny when they're in New York. It says, let's go downtown to Lower Fifth Avenue, Washington Square in Greenwich Village. And Mickey says, Greenwich Village, that's where all them artists live, ain't it? <laughs> which is kind of funny considering that Sickles was having a little fun there um, in so far as he was an artist. And I don't know, he may have had his studio down in Greenwich Village. So they go to Morocco and then they're in the Middle East. And they, again, they get into a bad situation with this dude right here. He's, he's bad news. And um, they, end, they end up rescuing a couple captive women that, See, this is where you think that um, Scorchy and her might get together. You sure looking far enough ahead, Mickey. I didn't know you ever had a thought of getting married. Every woman thinks of that an awful lot. Some runs around looking and some just sits and waits till the right man makes up his mind. And she's kind of looking at the corner out of her eye at him and you're thinking, wow, she is smitten with Scorch, but that turns out not to be the case. Okay, I'll give it away, spoiler alert. She and Himmelhaus um, admit their love to Scorchy, and then Scorchy's kind of bummed out because he, he loved her. And then he takes a position in South America and then leaves, and that's how the book ends. But check out the clouds, man. This guy had a mastery of clouds. Very simple. His work was very simple, and he actually made a comment speaking about his work in Scorchy Smith, how he set out to really show how the eye sees light and shadow around an object um, instead of a whole bunch of detail, just to get the bare essentials down in a drawing to convey what is there and what the eye picks up right away at first. And it, it, it kind of is that thing of simplicity is best. And that's what, that's what my takeaway is from the work of Noel Sickles. This dude here um, hires Sickles to go take care of his coffee plantation in South America. And Mickey gets really upset when Scorchy says that he's leaving, which is kind of weird. You're wondering, it's like, it kind of makes you wonder, it's like, almost seems like she's in love with both of the guys, Scorchy and Himmelhaus, honestly. But Scorch leaves because, you know, he's the independent, kind of a lone guy. He's kind of a lone wolf. 
And here he is leaving, but he's not happy in this sequence. He doesn't smile at all through it. I mean, his countenance looks kind of like that. Sickles was really good at conveying emotion with just very, very few lines. And then the last frame, which is kind of cool. I'm not sure if this was Sickles' last frame for the entire strip before he left in 1936, but this is dated August 14th of, of 1936. I'm going to be doing more research on that. I think he may have drawn more actually into the South American one, but this woman he meets on the steamship about saying, oh, you know, you're an adventurous guy going into the Brazilian jungle. Um, and uh, da, 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 da. And then the, the woman says, this girl, this woman that he's just met on the steamship, you can't fool me. You're an adventurer at heart. The idea of a job is secondary. Scorch says, maybe. I've never thought much about it. I'm always hoping for a new thrill around each corner. At the moment, those eyes of yours top anything the jungle has to offer, and then it ends. So, you know, you're thinking there's some redemption for Scorch because he, he, you know, Mickey and Himmelhaus are, or Himmel, Himmelstrauss, whatever his name is, are, are running away together to get married. And Scorch is finding perhaps new love, and that's how this book here ends but it does make me want to read more and see how things go in the coffee plantation anyway if you've stayed with me this long this evening thank you very much i hope you've enjoyed the video please leave your comments below noel sickles is i would say along with the great john buscema and if you haven't seen my videos on john buscema um check them out they're all in my black and white art playlist which I will link to right here, my black and white art playlist. Check it out. Uh, I would say John Buscema and Noel Sickles, my top two. You guys have a great evening. Thanks for watching.